This is the 13th round where we talk all things boxing, letter boxing. In today's show, we'll be recapping the Jose Zapeta and Regis Progray fight. We'll also be recapping Dillian White versus Jermaine Franklin. And we'll also be recapping Tyson Fury and Derek Chisora. So, first things first, congrats are in order to Regis Rougarou Progre from New Orleans, Louisiana. Regis Progre defeated Jose Zepeda uh, via impressive, impressive 11 round knockout. Uh, I thought the fight was pretty one sided. You know, Zepeda had his moments. I thought Zepeda won round one. It's really a, a fill out round, but I thought Zepeda did the better work in round one. Uh, midway through round two, you can see Pro Gray starting to kind of get his distance and to be able to time and figure out Zepeda uh, a little bit better than he started out in round one. And from that point on, uh, rounds three, I thought Pro Gray won. Round four, Pro Gray won. Uh, Zepeda suffered a cut over uh, his eye in round four. And the middle rounds was pretty much more the same where, it, I mean, rounds five, six, seven, you can say eight and nine, you're waiting for Zepeda to maybe try to do something different in the fight. And he never really tried anything different until maybe round 10. You can, I still thought Progray won round 10. He won every round, I thought, except the first round. But maybe you can give Zapetta 10. Zapetta hit Progray with a hard left hand in round 10 that I thought it I thought it may have hurt Regis Progray. Um and afterwards uh Progray actually returned with a, a left of his own and it started a brawl. Round 10 was probably the best round of the fight. But needless to say, round eleven, we didn't get any more fireworks. Uh Progray landed a left hand that took Zapetta's legs completely away from him. And when Progray realized he was hurt, he jumped all over him, man, and, and he finished he finished that fight. So big shout out to Regis on the victory. Um he is now the junior welterweight or super lightweight WBC champion. That's a 140-pound division. So Regis has the green strap, World Boxing Council champion at 140 pounds, Regis Progray. Now, the next fight on our docket is Dillian White and Jermaine Franklin. Uh, this fight was a really, really good fight, actually. It was a really, really good fight. Um, we called it. We called it live, our first live stream. Um, I thought Jermaine Franklin looked like the better boxer, which was to be expected. But Jermaine Franklin, uh, he fought majority of that fight off his back foot. That fight was called for Dillian White. Dillian White got the decision. Um, we called it a draw. Our scorecards here at Rounds Boxing Club had to fight 115 to 115. Um, but one of the judges actually called it a draw. One judge, The first judge had it 115-115. And the other two judges scored the fight 116-112. Um, it was fishy to me after the first round. They scored the first round 10-10. to Dillian White lost that first round. Jermaine Franklin boxed him up in that first round. Jermaine Franklin looked to be gassed a little bit in this fight. He looked a little heavier than I normally am accustomed to seeing him. Um, Dillian White... Uh, he did good work in the fight. He did, but I felt like Jermaine Franklin landed the more effective shots just throughout the fight. But right at the end of the fight, Dillian White did hit Jermaine Franklin with a hard shot. And if there would have been a few more seconds left in that fight, Dillian White would have put Jermaine Franklin on the canvas. So, Dillian White... Excuse me, shout out to Aquafina. But Dillian White defeats... Jermaine Franklin via decision. And our 
last fight we're going to talk about today was Tyson Fury and Derek Chisora. Now, this also was a fight in the heavyweight division. Uh, this is this was Fury and Chisora's third time meeting in the square circle, and it was pretty much more of the same. Like, uh, Chisora never did anything effective. We saw Tyson Fury. I mean, he landed a few hard shots, but Fury was never phased, hurt, or in any trouble in this bout. We also saw Tyson Fury fight Southpaw, which he did against Chisora in the second fight. Uh, and it was pretty much uh, Fury just taking Chisora in the deep deep waters and drowning him. Fury needed to get the rounds because um, he got some big fights coming up in 2023. Uh, just, you know, kind of on his plate. We'll see. Uh, Fury ended up knocking out Chisora in round 10, which we predicted, if you watched our tele the tapes uh, and fight predictions, on this fight, we predicted Tyson Fury to fit stop, a late round stoppage uh, of Derek Chisora. Um, Chisora, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to retire after this fight. I got to go back and watch the fight again with the volume on because... Uh, we had the volume now when we watched the fight or whatever, and uh, I'm I'm thinking he should retire. Uh, shout out to Derek Chisora. He had a wonderful career. Derek War Chisora, if this is a career, shout out to Derek Chisora. Um, yeah, but we 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 knew Tyson Fury was going to come into this fight and do what he did. I, I figured he was going to knock him out. I'm glad he got the rounds in, so that's why I thought late round stoppage. Plus, Derek Chisora is a tough warrior. The referee actually had to stop in, st step in, and stop the contest. So, Derek Chisora, you know, he was his own enemy, his own worst enemy in the fight because he wouldn't go down. Fury was hitting him with some good shots. He wasn't really putting together more pop shot in him. And as he started to put those shots together in rounds 9 and 10, the ref... You know, he, he warned the corner in between rounds 9 and 10 that Chisora's not looking good. Maybe y'all want to stop the fight. And the ref, you know, you can see the look in his face of concern. And he stopped that fight. And, yeah, man, we we, we, we got to the bag. Matter of fact, and speaking of getting to the bag, that brings us to our next segment. Betting on boxing. This segment is for all you go-getters and risk-takers. Let's say that you are feeling confident that a particular fighter will win by knockout. The first thing you want to do is decide how much you are willing to wager. In this case, I felt Tyson Fury would knock out Derek Chisora in between rounds 7 and 12, and I was willing to place a $200 bet on it. Instead of grouping the rounds, I spread the $200 on individual rounds covering rounds 5 through 12. Rounds 5 and 6 were cover rounds to protect my investment. I placed just enough on those two rounds to make a slight profit. Round 7 through 12 is where I put most of the wager. As you can see, I placed $33 on round 8, $33 on round 9, $26 on round 10, and $23 on rounds 11 and 12 respectively. Fury went on to knock out Chisor in round 10 giving us a total payout of $1,268.36 off of a $26 ticket. We wagered $200. This gave us a grand total profit of $1,068.36. Cha-ching! Did y'all see what Adrian Broner posted to Instagram? I believe it was Instagram. He posted it. And he was actually uh, uh, talking to Mac Main. Uh, Mac Main, shout out Holly Grove. You know, Mac Main for president. Uh, and I'll, I'll just put it up here so you guys will we'll, 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 we'll read it together. I thought this was hilarious. Uh, yeah, pull that footage up for me. Pull the doctor! Apparently, Adrian Broner sent Mac Main for president this message in response to Regis Rougarou Progray beating Jose Zapeta for the WBC title. It says, and I quote Adrian Broner, 
Now your boy got that title. We can make it happen after I handle my business in February. McMahon's response was, handle your business in February, then pull up and get that ass whooped. You long overdue. Broner responds to McMahon, Hey man, you ain't scared to talk to me like that? Laughing out loud. McMahon then responds to Adrian Broner saying, You gonna get punished, bruh. Ben told you that. Don't look too far ahead and get knocked out in February. Stay focused. Adrian Broner's response was, Listen, bro, I take this shit a fight at a time. February is my first priority. And once I handle that business, I'll be at y'all front door mat like I'm delivering UPS. And then McMahon's response was, but if you lose, you're going to be working at UPS. Laughing out loud emojis. I'm rooting for you. Adrian Broner's response was, before I be working at UPS, I'll be having some work come through UPS. Don't get it twisted like bottle caps and shoestrings before boxing. I've been touching money. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Um, I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. That's all we got for you today. Thank you for watching. Peace.